Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Gar. Today we're gonna to look at super quick Python automation ideas. This is something I do myself as well. I do look online for different projects to actually practice my programming skills more because it's always good to keep the momentum going and keep practicing the skills because you just wanna improvise them most of the time. So it's good to do these kind of projects. So I'm just bringing on my own Python project that I do find interesting and I hope you enjoy them as well. Give it a go and let me know in the comment box below what do you think about these programming projects and what are your favorite programming projects. I think magic is quite big with programmers these days so and I'm a bit of a magician myself so why not give it a go. And that's my own trick. It is my own trick. So the first project is clutter free. Clutter free is basically what I'm trying to do in this project is I'm trying to keep my download folder clean. So whenever I download new files, if they're in a certain DMG format, because obviously I use Mac, so if they're in a DMG format, they are obviously download installer files. So I keep them there, but if there are any certain Excel files or different files that I do want to use them in future, but I don't want to manually move them from one folder to the other folder. So I use this uh, project to basically automatically move these files to my Dropbox account. So that's how I keep my files and folders up to date all the time. So let's demonstrate it. Okay, so in my project, as you can see, uh, I have um, initially what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to first load uh, JSON file. Again, JSON file is the file where I have s stored all my destination and source folder files, plus my access token key for Dropbox. And then in my class itself, my class is clutter free, where first of all, I'm initializing the, the extension that I want wanted to check through and then again i have my first function which is clean downloads folder now again in that function what i'm trying to do is i'm looping through all the files that exist in the download folder and finally uh, based on my condition what i'm checking is if any of the extension of the file is similar to the extension that i have mentioned in my check extension list and if they match i'm basically uploading those files into the dropbox account so let's demonstrate it So my second project is Visualizer. Now in Visualizer, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to basically create a format in Plotly Dash where I want to have a folder on the top where I can actually drag and drop my Excel files. And I do want to populate uh, automatic tables and automatic types of the data that's there in that Excel file and basically doing some more plots on that file. Now this would be really good to, if you're getting if trying to get used to Plotly Dash, to just work with the framework itself. Now, it's, it's not really 
more advanced in terms of what I actually want to get out of it, but it's, it's really good when you work from end to end to just populate a Plotly Dash application and just get it running. You will go through a lot of hurdles and a lot, learn a lot during the way, even if it's small as just populating a table, just populating a graph. So give it a go, it does help if you're looking at your uh, more visualization skills and you want to progress more on them and actually use Plotly Dash in your work itself as well. So let's demonstrate it. The third project is Web Scraper. Now, Web Scraping is a really good skill set to have in your CV. Uh, basically, why it's really beneficial is because uh, if you have some sort of site where you actually have to go manually and extract information that does consume a lot of time, so not in doing it one time, but if you have to do it every day, it does take a lot of time to do that process. But if you can, if you know the skills of web scraping, what you can do is you can automate the whole process and rather than you have to go in and extract information manually, you can actually automate the whole process where you can run your scripts, which can scrape the site and give you the information in a data frame format every day. Now in this project I will be demonstrating how to scrape the site to get Bitcoin prices on a daily level.
in web scraper so i have first my class which is yahoo finance current again in that class what i'm trying to do is first of all i'm trying to show how can you use selenium to open chrome drivers itself and again uh, selenium would be a good package to use if you're trying to build a bot but uh, in this we are trying to just extract the prices from yahoo finance the price which is for bitcoin current price so what I'm doing in my current function is I'm actually searching the specific class that I want to extract information in. Again, I'm trying to do which is soup.findall to find that class and, and go through the HTML and find the exact information that I'm looking for, which is the price for Bitcoin. Finally, I'm returning that price in my class and updating it in a JSON format. Okay, so secondly, then I have another class, which is uh, Yahoo Finance Historic. What I'm trying to do through that is I'm trying to create an automatic way to actually extract the link. Now, link will be dependent on a user defined date. So user will define what day, how many days uh, you want to go back. And that date will then be subtracted by a date as of today to actually build that band where I want to extract the information between those days. Finally, once I have my link that I want to use to extract the data from Yahoo Finance. And finally, the response that I get, which is my actual file. I'm basically doing pd.readcsv and I'm opening that file and reading it through. So let's demonstrate it. I hope I inspired you through these projects and you will give it a go. Uh, for most of these projects, I do run them daily basis as well. And the way I automate these projects is by using Apache Airflow. If, if you haven't used Apache Airflow before, Apache Airflow basically is a platform that's been built by engineers in the Airbnb. Apache Airflow is a platform which programmatically allows you to author, monitor and schedule your workflows. You can basically use Apache Airflow to um, to author your workflows now in a way. You can, you're designing a, a DAG format file, which is again, DAG is your uh, directed acyclic graphs of tasks. Now, which helps you in terms, it also have a functionality where you can create dependency on tasks. If you want to run your task, which is a task number two, only when the task number one has been run properly, you can actually create those dependencies as well. It does gives you a nice looking front end GUI page where you can actually turn on and off your scripts uh, at times. Whenever I turn my PC on, I don't have to run my Python scripts manually. What I do is I turn on my web server for Airflow and I turn on my Airflow scheduler, which just turns on my all my tasks that I want to run uh, either overnight or even while I'm working. So same way if I had my projects up there, which was the three projects. The first project, which is to move my files and download folders, it just happens automatically on the background because I have them running through Apache Airflow on every minute interval. And similarly, I also have a uh, web scraper turned on where I'm basically extracting the information from the site on an automatic basis. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, definitely give it a thumbs up if you liked the video and share and do subscribe to the channel as well. I see you in the next video. Peace out.